Welcome to Flash Tutorial Ramp Game Part 2. It's a follow-up to Ramp Game Part 1. I have the Flash Tutorial Ramp Game Part 1 opened on my computer. And now we're going to select these two lower frames. Get to the fuzzy square, drag it to the right then drag it back and that gives us that action come here on the buttons layer insert a blank keyframe on these labels for button labels insert a blank keyframe and on the action script select the action script get that fuzzy here on that frame and drag it to the right and that gives us a blank keyframe here. Select frame one of the actions layer, open the actions panel, and type in this code. Type, 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 and it's a stop, S-T-O-P, open, close, bracket, semicolon, and we're going to make a new button called Start Level 1, capital S, capital L, E-V-1, underscore B-T-N, period, on press, small O, capital P, turns blue, equals function open and close bracket there's my open curly bracket my close curly bracket don't worry about this level one trace I have it commented out if we have any problems we can use that for troubleshooting and we're going to say go to and stop small g small t capital A capital S open bracket and quotation level one close quotation close bracket semicolon and there's my close curly bracket Let's copy this level one. Right click copy. Go back to the main timeline and make sure all my frames are locked, all my layers are locked. Select that buttons layer, insert a layer. Call it frame name, F R M N A M. Insert a blank keyframe on frame two and open the actions panel and paste in that name we just copied so now that's called level one and when I hit the enter you'll see the little indicator flag in there that this has a frame name open up that actions panel frame one again and copy this button name and now we'll make a button copy copy that name back to the timeline lock all the layers click on the first frame of this buttons layer and get that fuzzy square and drag that to the right and click on this empty first frame of the buttons layer unlock it come down here and see where it says drop ball that's because of the frame of the labels but I'm leaving it there right now so I can make my button and I want it to be a blue button so select my oval tool keep the blue and make an oval highlight that oval modify convert it to a symbol make sure button is selected and paste in that name that we copied and if you didn't copy it it was called start lev1 underscore btn capital S capital L copy that again probably don't need to do that but we'll copy it again okay open the properties panel and paste that in for an instance name lock that buttons layer and hide it and we see the code from the previous button so select that buttons label layer unlock it select that first frame click on this make it uh, white see what I did there I made it white now when I click on this button so I can see it again I can read my label and this I want to call level one L E V E L space one 
level one now I'm just going to center that on here okay now you can make that bigger if you want locking all my layers so now let's try it when we do it should stop on frame one and I'll see this button I should then be able to click this button and jump to frame two where I can then drop the ball control test movie test we're stopped here I can't move those but I can click this which will now take us to the next level where I can now move these and then I can drop the ball now next thing we want to do is make sure if I hit the bottom or the sides that we go back to that frame one at this point I want to make the stage a little bigger so I'm just going to click off to the side of the stage area open my properties panel and instead of having it 550 I'm going to make it 700 and I'm going to make it 500 that when you move your things around you'll have you'll have more room if you do it that way select the buttons layer make sure all the layers are locked insert a layer call it border b o a r d e r s borders select that second frame insert a blank keyframe mm, we know that the stage is 7 by 500 so let's make it small pick up the rectangle tool make the border some kind of a crazy color there I'm going with that purplish color and make a border right here open your properties panel select that border that you just made and make sure that the width is 700 press enter and open your alignment panel and we want to horizontally center the stage so click this one and this one and that will put that in the center of our stage for us highlight it modify it convert it to a symbol make sure it's a movie clip call it B O A R D E R underscore M C copy that name might click copy in the properties panel paste in that name and call it border B as in bottom for the instance name let's make this smaller again 25% open the library panel grab that border movie clip drag it on we know the height is 500 open the properties panel make the height in this case it's going to be the width because I'm going to be turning it make it 500 enter up here paste in that instance name that we still have and call this border left underscore MC we can use the free transform tool and rotate it 90 degrees it is there selection tool drag it over pick up your alignment panel and this time vertically align it right click copy this right click paste in place using your arrow keys tab it over and we know that it is aligned for us just get it to the end there so now we have a border on top and you can put one on excuse me we have a border on the bottom and the two sides and this one has to be this one here has to be border right so I have a 
border left, I have a border bottom, and a border right. So now we want it make it so that when the ball hits either of those three borders, we go back to this frame right here, frame one. So make sure all the layers are locked. Open the actions panel. And down here, down the very bottom, there should be three curly brackets. Click after the second one. So now you're between these two curly brackets and two comments, two forward slashes, hit borders. That means we hit the borders. And in here, a whole bunch of type and type, 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 type. And let's right here. We start off with an if, open bracket, ball underscore MC, period, hit test, small h capital T, open bracket, border B underscore MC, close bracket, close bracket, open bracket, don't worry about these traces, they're for me if, if I have troubleshooting or you if you need a troubleshooting. Drop, that's the variable that stops us from clicking the ball and making it start over again while it's falling. So it, so it says drop equals false, semicolon. Go to and stop, small g, small t, capital A, capital S, open bracket, quotation, start, one, close quotation, close bracket, semicolon, and there's my close bracket for my if. You can copy that. Copy that, paste it, and all you're going to do is change the border to border R, then paste it again and change the border to L. And when you're finished, there should be two curly brackets down here. Copy this start one. Right click copy. Go back to the timeline. Frame one of the frames names. Open up the properties panel and paste that in to give it a frame label. So let's test this out. And when it hits the bottom or the sides, I'm going to click it. And before I click it again, I'm going to move these so I can get it to hit the, the bottom real quick. And drop it. Unless it gets here, and then I'll move this. And we go back to level 1, and that would happen if we hit any of those borders. We now want the ball to go back to the start position. So make sure you unlock the ball's layer. Make sure the rest of them are locked. Select frame one. Select the ball. Open the properties panel. And I'm going to make my X coordinate here 140. And I'm going to make my Y 60. Now yours may be slightly different, but anyway, you want to write them down. 140 by 60. Close that off. Lock that ball's layer now. Select frame one of your actions panel. Open it up. And right here at the bottom, type in this code. Type, type, type. Ball underscore MC period underscore X. We're setting that at 140. Ball underscore MC period underscore Y. We're setting that at 60. So when it hits the borders, it, when it comes back to this frame one, it's going to put it exactly where it was the first time. So let's test that out. Now we can let it drop. I'm going to move this one out of the way and this one out of the way so it hits the ground right quick. Sends us back to one and puts the ball back to where we can do this again. And we should be able to do this over and over again. Good. Make sure all the layers are locked. Select the borders layer. Insert a layer. And call it target. T-A-R-G-E-T. -E Select frame one. Get your rectangle tool. Pick up a different color here. Um, I'm going to pick up this crazy yellow. And right here, in this case, I'm going to draw a little square. There it is there. Got to select the, the frame, rectangle tool, and a little square right here. Pick up my selection tool, highlighting it, 
modify, convert to a symbol, make sure movie clip is selected, T-A-R-G underscore M-C, copy that name, right click copy, open the properties panel, paste it in as an instance name, and call it, put a one here so it's targ1 underscore MC. Make sure that layer is locked, lock on all my layers, select frame 2 of the actions code, open it up, and right here between these two, the last two curly brackets, going to insert some code, and type, 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 type. It's another test. If open bracket ball underscore MC period hit test turns blue open bracket targ1 underscore MC close bracket close bracket we want to just like here where we would if it was hitting the walls go back to the start one we want to go somewhere else and go to start two and also we want to make sure that it goes back to be able to drop the ball again so drop DROP capital D equals false semicolon go to and stop same as this one open bracket quotation start to close quotation close bracket semicolon and again we should have two curly brackets at the end copy this right click copy go back to the main timeline under your frame names insert a blank keyframe, open your properties panel, and paste it in, paste. Select the frame name layer, insert a frame, and call it frame number, F-R-R-M number, N-U-M, and select the first frame here, and up here in the corner, pick up your text tool, text tool, Text tool uses this fill, so let's give it a nice bright red fill. And with the text box, we've already, doesn't really matter because we're just using this. And in here, let's make this pretty big so we can see them, up around 31 points. Put a 1. Select this next frame. Insert keyframe. And if I look down here, this I want to make this bigger. I want to make this one a two because we're going to have to keep track of frames now for a minute. Insert keyframe. Make this a three. So now when we're told to jump to this frame here, we'll come to this number three. So let's test it. I can't move these can't move anything we're on frame one we now jump to frame two now I can move these anywhere I want and here's the target so let's let's make it miss the, the target first and drop off the side and it should return us back to to this level one so let's drop the ball it's going to hit here or and go back oh, let's move this back in a bit Make it hit the side wall. That's good. And it's going to drop, hit the side, and go back to frame one. Now this time, let's move these and allow it now to hit the target, in which case it should jump to frame three. Drop the ball, and it should jump to frame three. I think that's enough for this video. There will be a follow-up. Naturally, Ramp Game Part 3. Make sure you save this FLA if you plan on doing that. Hope you learned something from this tutorial, and I hope you use what you learn.